Hey guys, here we are again talking about coaching and I'm back here with Yannick and Sivash. Hi guys. Hello. <clears throat> cool. And today's question is, um, my client isn't getting the results he came for. What do I do? Ooh. It's a good one. It's a hot topic. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I certainly hear that a lot uh, from coaches who, especially uh, I noticed at the beginning when coaches are just starting out that, uh, but that's certainly not limited to that. You know, it's my client isn't achieving the things that they came for, or they're not hitting their targets, or they're not taking action, or on some level being really concerned that they're not delivering on I want to say the promises that the coaching has made in some way, but like I'm being careful with how to phrase it because I think every coach contracts in a different way. What I certainly notice is that the weight becomes heavier, the more the coach markets their coaching as results oriented, not just the results oriented, because that means there's an orientation towards result, but where the coach guarantees results or you know, sold it in a way that they were super confident about getting the client there. And I hear coaches about like, I, I get my client to achieve this, you know, or it's my responsibility to help my client achieve this goal. And that's where the weight of the responsibility gets quite heavy. And I think the tendency to ask that question is, is a lot more real at that point. David Clutterbuck at some point said, I might have mentioned that on the podcast at some point, uh, and I'm probably uh, re um, uh, paraphrasing uh, quite, quite freely, but he said something along the lines of uh, the goal of coaching is not to help a client achieve results. The goal of coaching is to help somebody make progress on their thinking on a particular issue. Mm. And that uh, takes the load off a lot and I know that some coaches out there will probably have a reaction to it because like, no, of course, coaching is about helping somebody get results. That's what they came for. That's what I sold them. You know, I sold them that they're going to become this person or implement this kind of behavior. And the way I see it is that you're selling a potential to become that person or implement that kind of behavior. You know, the client still has to do the work. You know, they still need to get out of their comfort zone. They still need to do their exploring. They still need to create the insights and the learning. You facilitate that, you help with that. But how much responsibility are you taking for your client achieving the results within the time that you have allocated? And personally, the way I set up my coaching, I don't guarantee results. Um, I guarantee that like, I'm going to be fully present. And I sometimes can be very confident that this is an achievable goal, but I never guarantee it because I can't give any guarantees. They're going to have to do that. And I've never had a client say, you know, what the fuck? I came here to do this and it's not happening. You know, even though sometimes I thought that. And there was one particular client that I had where I, I had a lot of supervision around that because I really felt that I failed as a coach to help them achieve what they came for. And then they wrote me an email. I actually, I, we, we finished a conversation and we finished a relationship and I, I didn't feel good about it. And she was really nice about it. Um, and I thought maybe that's, maybe that's a people pleasing thing. Maybe she didn't want to be rude, you know? So I, I wasn't satisfied. Six months later, she writes me a message and said, Hey, I just want to thank you because the, the, the work that we've done was so instrumental in laying the seeds for what I've done after, you know, because as we stopped working together and two months later I saw she was working with somebody else and she really hit her targets and got a lot of results. And I'm like, Oh fuck, <laughs> you know, maybe I wasn't the right coach for her. And in the end I was, it was very, very important actually, but it wasn't about creating the results, but it was about making progress towards the results and that's something we had done really, really well together. I just didn't see it like that because it wasn't about the results. It was about making progress towards them. Hmm. There's lots in that. It's really interesting. I think what comes to mind first, uh, what you said at the, the earliest part, you know, about 
marketing, contracting with your clients, setting expectations, that all kind of comes into it. You know, I think whether coaching is about getting results or not, that quote you gave, I think that for me depends on what kind of coach you want to be, you know? And I, th- I think if you're someone who, yeah, wants to be a results kind of oriented co- coach, that's fine. But then obviously that responsibility sits with you and then you have to kind of know how to deal with if you aren't delivering on that. Um, that that story I think is really interesting what it makes me think, you know, especially that, you know, she came to you and she had that experience, which she ended up seeing as so helpful whilst you questioned yourself because you didn't get her the results and then saw another coach get her the results. I don't know, you know, I think there's different things that go into getting the results. You know, it's it's like the whole mindset and setup, which I can imagine maybe was more of, of what maybe happened in your sessions. And that essentially kind of paves the way for getting the results, right? Like one is the mindset and two, the, the other side is kind of doing the actual actions, but you need the right mindset for that. So yeah, maybe the, those were just two different approaches. Um, but about not getting the results, definitely, yeah, I think, you know, it's, I, I, I'm always reminded, yeah, of, of kind of the more, the approach of, um, at the end of the day, not overtaking the responsibility as the coach, but of course, that it's with the client. One thing I found really useful with that, actually, Yannick, was the contract you kindly shared with me, which kind of also sets those expectations with the client to begin with, so that the client and you are on the same page and know kind of what's, what the service is providing, what they can reasonably expect to receive, and kind of the distribution of responsibility, right? And then you kind of contract on those terms. Um, sorry, I've gone off on a bit of a like little thing started around. The, my final thoughts on that are I think, you know, if I had that situation with a client of my own, I think I would, you know, check in with them and just be like, you know, I'm conscious you're feeling right now you're, you're not getting the results. How do you feel about that? And just kind of check mm-hmm. in with them if that's even still important. And if it is, then kind of, you know, question, why do you think that's not been happening? What is it we need to do? What, what's getting in the way? And you can, you can always refocus. Um, so, yeah, I don't really have a point more than that to, to make, but those are the kind of things that came to my mind. Yeah, it can be difficult to ask that question and to acknowledge that the results have, maybe they haven't hitting their targets or maybe we haven't done quite the journey that we wanted to because in a way you're acknowledging that we haven't done what we said we wanted to do yet so some coaches don't want to make their client feel guilty for not having put enough work in or something to get the results you know they want to don't want to make them feel bad or maybe they don't want to necessarily acknowledge that you know we haven't made so much progress uh, because maybe they feel a bit awkward about it themselves because they start doubting their coaching when in fact, as you say, you know, what do I do is be curious about it, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know the amount of times I've asked this question myself. <laughs> I <laughs> bet. <laughs> clients not getting results uh, because, you know, I'm very focused on getting results. But I think the interesting thing here is, right, I think in the question itself, it, it already indicates that the coach is thinking about their own responsibility here. Right. And when we actually, you know, when we look at it in a different way, right, what, what can we do in this whole coaching relationship? Right. Or what are the expectations? There's so much more here. And I know you guys have talked a little bit about it because, because I think in, if we look at the coaching industry, there's, there's so many different types of coaches. You have health coaches that say, Hey, look, I have worked with 50 people and, you know, like 35 of them have lost incredible amounts of weight. Right. Um, and then you have, for example, other coaches that say, hey, I can get you, help you get fit, right? There's coaches that say like, hey, I've, you know, I've gone through a divorce and I help women, you know, rebuild their life after divorce, right? I've seen all these different types of coaches. And I think, you know, people can build over the years a lot of great results with different people. But I think what's important is the managing expectations, right? It, it's being clear, like, hey, like, you know, like, you know, usually like when you see those, um, I don't know, when you see those videos around people making a lot of money, they usually have a disclaimer. Now, you know, this, this income is not typical, but actually just, you know, communicate that in an honest way, 
what I found useful is this is this framework that I learned from one of my coaches, like 10, 80, 10. It's just actually explaining that, hey, look, the 10% of people I work with, you know, usually take between, you know, six to nine months to lose this amount of weight, right? And, you know, so 10% kind of like take, have above average results, right? Lose the weight in like four to six weeks. And then 10% have like above, below average. And then you talk about the other 80%, like, hey, this is what's also typical in my, in my work is, when we work on your beliefs and all, all that stuff, because there's different type of health coaches, there are type of health coaches that just tell people what to do, but then there are some great health coaches that actually coach people on how they're thinking and helping them shift that, shift their behavior. But then they, they communicate that, hey, you know what? Out of everyone I work with, like around 80% takes three to, you know, between two to four, two to four months to lose weight, right? So I think, you know, Personally, I think talking about results is not a bad thing, but I think it's how we communicate it because the expectations that we set out there actually creates the experience of the person. Because if you only communicate the top 10%, then they're expecting to lose that weight in four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. right? and you, don't, you don't get that. They're just going to be unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, it really depends, I think, how, uh, how you define results and how fixed you are on the results you set at the beginning. You know, and I think that's why it's so important to check into the progress and what people are getting from the sessions, you know, whether the goalpost might shift, things come up and maybe what seemed like a realistic goal in terms of time frame um, and achievement milestones, maybe that shifted because there's something we really need to deal with. And it turned out to be a much bigger obstacle than we had anticipated. So I think the the focus of the coaching, the outcome, uh, you know, if you set a smart goal around results, for example, uh, it's important that that you appreciate that that might be that might need to be flexible depending on what comes up, and that you stay tuned in to and check in, you know, with feedback on how it's going, so that the promises that we're going to be making progress here, and that you cannot promise particular results, but that I think. It can be a cop out to say uh, it's not about the results; it's about progress. Because I think Sivashi right. It, it's it's it can be really important. It can be really important to be really results oriented and focused, you know. And I think it's in the orientation, in the focus, that's the thing, right? Anybody who makes a business plan, uh, most business plans, if not all, they're not gonna get to the exact result that the business plan outlines, but it gives you focus and orientation. It allows you to make decisions on what to do today because you're focused on a particular outcome at the end of the year. And I think that's the same with the coaching. You know, you, as long as your business keeps growing, it's a success, you know, and depending on what your goals and targets were, it can be more or less of a success depending on how you're positioning yourself towards it. So it's good to check in whether we want to change something here, whether we want to adjust the plan, whether we want to adjust what the goalpost is and what the milestone is. Uh, but just be really aware of what's happening and check in with your client that they're happy with the with what they're doing here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a very um, this is a really interesting discussion, and I think it it comes so much back to the the con the initial contract that's set up, right? Because you have some. I hired a coach and I worked two years with him. And he said, look, the way I work, there is no agenda, right? And I said, well, well, I, I want to hire you because you're experienced in, in this area. And he said, yeah, I can help you with that. But I'm not going to, you know, hold you accountable. I'm not going to start the session and say, where are you in relation to that? It's you bring the agenda to every session. And it's a very interesting way of working, Right. Initially, I thought, well, I'm not getting a lot out of it. But then I realized, like, hey, well, it's my responsibility to bring what I need to the sessions, right? But then on the other side, I've experienced coaching, like Tony Robbins coaching, like people that are trained by Tony Robbins, and they call it results coaching. They're trained Tony Robbins coaching, and they ask the same, uh, you know, they ask the same questions every session. Apparently, they have, like, 17, 17 questions. But what I've experienced there is actually that, it gets me very focused because every session at the beginning of the three months, you know, there was a goal set out 
we get clear on the reason behind the goal. And then every session, it was like clear questions around the goal and the progress on the goal. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes it was a bit annoying. Actually, <laughs> you know, it, it made the work really effective. Mm-hmm. But again, it was appropriate in that context. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think it's interesting to just kind of like explore and experiment with it and, and really think like, what is it that I enjoy? Because sometimes we think like, oh, I should hold people accountable because that's what a coach should be doing. And I think, you know, yeah, I think we just, we just have to really mm-hmm. explore what what is ethical, of course, what falls under like, you know, what is part of our responsibility? What is our job? Yeah. What do I enjoy and what does my client need? And ideally they're the same, you know, but occasionally I'm applying a coaching style that maybe I'm not enjoying it so much. That's why it's work during that session, you know, because it's what the client needs right now. And maybe it's what they want. And if they continue to want that and I continue to do something that maybe I don't fully enjoy, maybe it's not my natural style, it's just something that they need, then maybe they need to work with a different coach. Maybe they want to work with a different coach rather, you know, and at those points I refer. Um, that's the beauty of a good consultation is that you get a sense for what your client might need and is that something that I would enjoy delivering. And if that's very results oriented and you're just not a very results oriented coach or overly focused, let's say on results, then, uh, you know, that's not a good match. And that's the art of, you know, choosing, choosing the right client. But sometimes you just, you know, you're a mechanic and you fix an exhaust pipe of an old Fiesta and it's not something that excites you, but you just do the job because you can. I've just been, I guess I've just been thinking about, you know, from the perspective of the client trying to, to get myself in, into, the, into their shoes. I think, you know, part of it comes with the framework of coaching, right? Like a client typically comes to coaching because they think of it as something that is designed for the purpose of coming in with a goal and working towards a goal and accomplishing it. So that's kind of, you know, how the kind of the initial coaching contracting happens, as in that's what the reason for them coming to coaching. I think the reality of the experience and the richness of what you get out of coaching typically speaks for itself. So I'm guessing, or it has been my own experience in coaching, and I, I know it's also been other people's experiences in, co- experiences in coaching. Sorry, I'm a bit tongue-tied today. Um, <laughs> that, you know, it's a typical kind of front of mind versus why I'm really here. You know, people bring something to coaching, which they think is the thing they want to work on. And then the more you unpack that, you know, and get to the bottom of things, the the intention or the important thing to them is something potentially completely different. Right. And I I think that's the same thing. People come to coaching and they bring a goal because they, they think that's what they should do. And that's kind of where we start off in our relationship with them. But the reality of what they get out of it even if it's not landing, you know, what they came with on that goal is, is, is a richness that's a lot more kind of broader and fuller. I don't know. I can't quite articulate. I think you guys are getting what I'm getting at. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, I'll I'm, leave what, I'm, what I'm getting from it is that the question, my client's not getting the results they came for, what do I do, is actually not that important. The more important question is my client is not getting the results they're coming for every time they come to me. You know, because they might have had different results in mind when they came in the beginning, and now that's shifted. So, you know, if the if if the results are not there and they're continuously not there, you have to very have a very open and honest conversation about uh, is this working for you? Mm-hmm. You know, and if it's not working for you, then how can we make it work, or who can make it work? You know, and that's an important conversation that's focused on your client getting the help they need not how can I keep this client and make it work for them. And that's an important question. I think we just need to be tuned in. And I think with that, we're also out of time. Yeah. (laughs) So thank you. We don't have a name for that question. I, uh, so we don't know who that came from. Thank you very much. I think it didn't, it sparked a lot. Mm. So yes, uh, as always, super curious about what people out there think and there might be some more some less results oriented coaches out there uh just generally curious about your opinions great question thanks guys all right 
See ya. All right. Take care. Bye. Thank you for being with us today. I appreciate your commitment to learning and growing as a coach. Just a few things before you go. First of all, we're doing this for you. So if there's anything you'd like us to talk about, do send us a question. Secondly, we're not doing this for profit. So we rely on your support to help us reach as many coaches as we can. So if you can send this episode to a friend or tell a fellow coach uh, about what we're doing here, maybe you can subscribe or leave us a review or even support us on Patreon. Um, that would be amazing. And lastly, you can find us across all major platforms. So uh, whether you like to watch or you like to listen or you like to download episodes and listen to it uh, in your car while you're driving through somewhere with no internet, uh, you can do so too. Um, and that's it from us. Thank you and I hope to see you next time.